Wholesale. Wholesale. Cherokee greeting. Wave the great feather. Oh. Okay. But we're starting today. This is actually May 2nd. And it's May 2nd because tomorrow is May 3rd. And May 3rd culminates the Yaki Easter ceremony, Pascua, like that. <clears throat> and it's a special day. So that's why I'm doing this today for tomorrow. Uh, it's called Dia Las Cruces. It is May 3rd, the day of the crosses, or Santa Cruz, Holy Cross Day. And also, it's also celebrated as it's called um, the Finding of the Cross. <clears throat> it's Finding of the Cross. Does it mean the cross that was figured in the story about the crucifixion, that crusaders you know, brought back enough splinters of that cross to build a castle? And enough nails, you know, to go with it. Anyway, this is this is a cross that grows, you know, in the forest, in the woods, all in the country. It's, it's a different cross like that. So that's the way we're starting. And for this day, <clears throat> the cross here in Guadalupe, in the Yaqui world, is different. <clears throat> it is a female cross, and we'll start by showing it right here. So this cross is in the Teopo, in the temple. And it's in the temple because the egg with the seed is in there, like it's incubating in there. So it's necessary that her cross be in the temple, in the Teopo. So I have the egg here to accompany that. This cross is figured as a pistolate. That is, the pistis is the female reproductive organ for flowers, in the flower for flowers. So that's what's happening here. It's all for the flowers. And that's where this has grown up here in the temple. If you can go over here to this drawing I have, I saw last week, what I'm figuring here is oh, a person uh, attired as of the Cotumbre, Parseo, Jose, and it's before this cross. Now, people can do different things to make the cross as female. Here in my drawing, I put the reboso on the cross to show that this is the female cross, and then I bordered it with the roses, the rose stems and the rose flowers. So all of that can be speaking of that. Now if we can come back here to her cross here and focus on that while I read this piece. This is from the ancient Aztecs, the Nahua, here. <clears throat> and it's about um, a matter of what I would call a flower spirit, a flower person. Oh, flowers and songs are synonymous in Mexico and in ancient Mexico. So I'm reading this while we're looking at her, her cross. I'm searching for you, my friends. I wander over the seed grounds, and here you are. Hooray! Take thought one with another. I have come. I am your amigo. May I come to enter myself among the flowers? I, a sunflower, or a flower of the acanthus? Am I here? Do I come as a guest? Oh, my friends, I am a pauper. Who am I? I live on the day. Something I do create, however, Flower songs, butterflies of song. Let my heart be enlightened. Let my heart know. Together with others I come. I have descended already. I have reached the earth like the mapa of the spring season. Flowery drums, my song arises besides wings of these songs. 
and spread over the earth. This is a complete symbol of the natural and supernatural processes of the flowering death and the reflowering. And maybe that's where they have the resurrection from. Speaking of the resurrection, we'll go back to the crucifix. As far as I know, the crucifix, you all understand what that is, I didn't need to show you one. Uh, as a symbol, at least, it doesn't appear until the Gothic time in Europe, you know, like the 12th, 13th, maybe 14th century. <clears throat> and another whole thing had uh, evolved about that. The word palamset is where we put one thing on top of another. Uh, I've seen this like on posters, uh, successive posters on a wall. <clears throat> and something of the earliest or the first one, there's some residue or vestige that shows through the others. Well, that's what has happened. Uh, this story that involves all of this, you know, has been, you know, redrafted and redrafted, edited and re-edited so many times like that. <clears throat> and then different uh, configurations, different interpretations have come up through it like that. <clears throat> but in some places, Native America, Native Mexico, the earlier still has retained, and that's pretty much my theme here, so that we can uh, see what has happened there. Uh, when I go over here to what I showed last week, this cross I call it the Foilated Cross. I get the name Foilated Cross because I was in the ancient ruins um, in Yucatan, and there's a temple, and it's called the Temple of the Foilated Cross. And what it is, is really, it's the tree. It's the tree of life, or the flowering tree. And so, even reportedly, the Spanish, or the Spanish Catholics, uh, saw that, and they thought definitely that the Christians had been there before them. Maybe not the Christians, but maybe somebody else from the Mediterranean, at any rate. That's what that stands for. The other thing, if we can go over here to this cross made of uh, rose thorn vines. Uh, Claudia made this. All at this time, that would be tomorrow, May 3rd, uh, all the houses in the, in the village, in the Pueblo, all have house crosses. These house crosses are woven out of willow withes. So on this day, the people, the men of the Cotumbri, have gone down in Guadalupe uh, on the banks of the uh, Salt River and have cut these withes of willow, a lot of them, and have brought them up to the plaza and have them there in the plaza. And what's happening is people now take the house cross that's been on their house all year and bring it there to exchange for these fresh willow withes. And eventually, after everybody has brought the older ones there, they will, you know, ignite them. It will be a beautiful uh, holy bonfire of these crosses. And then crosses will be ingeniously made. The willow is very, very flexible. So there's a way to uh, shape, shape that into a cross to put on your house about two or three feet high, like that. So in that case, this one is substituting for that, for that one, and <laughs> Claudia had made that, that one. And if you can come over here to, this is my, a little oil painting I have done, and this is also the Lord of the Tree, Balche, Balche. I should have said that with the foilated cross, what I have there, as Balche, meaning, and the way I'm rendering it, Lord of the Tree. So this is my oil painting of that. And we go up above that. My shield here is called a Nairika. A Nairika is, means sight or means eye, but more like a mythic eye. It's a kind of a sacred piece because what's figured in here is a deer. This deer is Masakoshi, deer tail. That's why he's got a big tail. And here's the gourd. The gourd you know, figures very fruitfully uh, in all of this theme. So it's got the energy coming out for Masha Kwashi.
And then from that, we can go over to my centerpiece here. And in my centerpiece, you know, certainly this is the shape of a cross. Uh, I painted blue. The blue is for the, the sacred patio. It's for the water and for the mist. It's blue. And it's, you know, giving, you know, the figure of a deer. And the antlers, instead of being horned antlers, are sacred arrows, meaning of the person who is hunting the deer to bring back to the village here. Uh, and all this is, is very sacred in that way. And the piece that I have uh, to go with this, if we keep focusing on this, Coyote bethinks himself and remembers, Let's go hunting, my brothers. See well to your snares. <laughs> we shall seek him who lives in the mountains. Standing here, we think of him who lives in the mountains. Now we call to Yavichwe. Ho! You must cry out to him. He cries to him, him who lives in the mountains. That morning star, Boeyotjoki, awaits him there in the east, waiting with his bow. Now he leaps yonder, that one who is the deer. He makes off to one side. He gives chase. Soon we come near to him at the edge of the dawn. Loosened, the arrow flies over him. Once more, the arrow, and under him it flew. Again, says my bow, to his heart the arrow flew. He cried out, that one who lives in the mountain. Morning star seeks him through the world. Look down at him, he says. Here is he, the one who lives in the mountain. Beautifully you lie laden with dew. So in this culture of the deer, uh, to give you an idea of Venice in Italy, or any Venice or Venice, California, uh, there are canals, you know, waterways. <laughs> And so there are sections, I'll call them, you know, blocks, and that there are bridges that go over these canals. So our Native America in the Southwest is likened to that. We have different nations, we have different locales, and the waterway runs between us. And then we have bridges that also the deer travels over the bridge. Even now, modern day, some cities are putting bridges over the freeway for mountain lions and deer to cross. So that's how we have this uh, exchanging kind of culture. So a lot that I have figured here in my painting of the heart. His arms are open. This is an open, open heart, uh, is he, he's saying like that. And from him, just like uh, the, the resin, the sap, that flows down and fertilizes the vine. So we have the saying, He is the vine in my blood. He is the old vine. And here, this gourd person, in this one, uh, this is Tanto. This is Tanto. He's Gacho. Um, he is the Pascola. So here I have a little Pascola mask to help us say that. Because there in the Ramada, during the ceremony, uh, in Yaqui, he's called Paco. Uh, in Spanish, it picks it up as payaso. Payaso, because he is a kind of payaso. And he keeps uh, people gathered around the um, Ramada, uh, involved, engaged, and entertained. Uh, he passes out cigarettes and things like that. And he tells stories. He tells stories. And all this is, is for the people to be involved in this very, very sacred area of the Ramada, where eventually the egg will also be residing in there. And so here, that's why we have the little Pascola mask, you know, with, with all, of, all of this. So this is the way we have given a sense for 
uh, tomorrow and like that. So the cross earlier than the idea or ideology story of the Christian story uh, and the one maybe the uh, 16th century Spaniards brought over but there was already a lot here already and so uh, if we can go down here to this cross here this is a Pueblo cross is what we would call it now the southwest along with the northwest Mexico towards the later 19th century was I don't know what to say nicely governed by the Spanish and the Catholics uh, for a while, uh, 1880 up to the Americans took over. So in a way, there's there's a, there's a kind of presence there with that. And so this cross is a Pueblo cross. Uh, it is made by a Pueblo man named uh, a Zen, Zenic, Zenic. And so it's very interesting because it's being figured as a cross while at the same time it's a kind of a standing up map of the plaza in the Pueblo. And so while you're focusing on that, I'm going to say what, it, what it's about. Uh, it's called the Nansipu. The Nansipu means earth belly root. So that we're saying this is Nansipu, the earth belly root. And it's the symbolic place from which we emerged from her earth womb. We know it to be the center around which we swirl, swirl like an eddy. And it's marked by an old rock that's half buried in the, in the middle of the plaza. Uh, in Guadalupe, in a Yaqui village, on the place of a rock, there's an old cross, you know, Cajos Mayor, the major cross. Uh, sometimes it's even figured, it looks like an old cross, you know. So it has the same function in the Yaqui village, cross instead of rock. In the Pueblo, it's this rock, like that. <clears throat> it's a place of creation that connects and pre-configures. The plaza itself is called Bupinge. Bupinge means the center heart place. The center place, or the center places, I should say, are located within other centers, and they all swirl and intersect and influence each other. So everywhere in our Native American world we have center places and we have some ways of knowing those center places and recognize them. And here with the cross we're looking at uh, it's the intersection of the horizontal and vertical of physical and symbolic universe. The horizontal is called the valley place or the feminine space from which to see all around. And so the Pepunge is the vertical. Um, and so this action in the plaza keeps the plaza from becoming stagnant. In the plaza of Guadalupe, they also call it the glory road. I definitely myself have had that experience as if instead of standing on a flat uh, earth, um, I feel like I'm standing on a mound because I can see all around outside the village and see the lights of the city beyond. So that's uh, what's being figured here. That keeps, keeps the plaza from, you know, getting stagnant, as, as we would call it, you know. Uh, so, as I said, the Popange is the vertical center because it brings together the up and down um, of the Nansipu which is emerging from the underworld. All through all of this is the Pawaha. The Pawaha is the current of life, the breath, the breath life. And here I have this here. This, is, this stone is also called the uh, Tansipu. Tansipu here is here in Coyote's Creation Lodge is the center place. Anywhere that I bring this Nansipu to is a center. And so everything relates to it. So that we can know we are the intersection of the energies of the cosmos. So that 
That's a very, very beautiful. Now, other things of, that we are going to have here, I'm going to uh, bring you a, a Aztec or a Nanhu little story like that. So I'm going to introduce some of these characters here. But I want to start with this here. This one person, and here I call it, you know, Tata Wadi. I'm most familiar with Tata Wadi. I will call him, you know, uh, the close and near, Lord of the close and near. He's also connected with or governs the fire and light and relationships like that. His markings of his face also symbolize the tree of life, which means the breath, the tree of life and the breath of life here. And then up here, of course, we have the deer and along with the deer, this is these are characters now in, in a little drama. This is the pleasant pheasant. Da -da -da. And the pleasant pheasant is the ancient Aztec symbol of the sun. So back to the temple of the foilated cross in Yucatan, on top of, it's actually the tree, is the pheasant. Very stylized, but that is an example where the pleasant pheasant does appear on top of the tree of life. Oh, I should have said, you know, that that tree of life in Yucatan is the Awa Hongche, and that means the tree, the quickening tree. I should have said that. The quickening tree, the tree where there's life, where uh, we wake up. Awa Hongche. And so on top of that, in that temple, is the pleasant pheasant. And along here, this is the rabbit, too rabbit, but he's also called in the play the angry rabbit. And he's kind of a, of a double with um, the deer. Somehow together, they form a kind of, I don't know, uh, joint spirit, I would say, of the uh, magui. The magui makes the pulque, or later tequila. So there's a little bit of inebriation uh, going on here in these characters. Over here, this is standing for the singing parrot. And up here is the gilded butterfly. And then a major character in the play, this is the bald face parakeet. And we'll hear from him in just a minute. So we can uh, be focused on, you know, any <laughs> any of these characters here because that's who's being featured, <laughs> and uh, these little creatures they have come from Tlahuacan, which kind of means the place of water and mist, and they have gathered to give pleasure of the, uh, the Lord who is everywhere. That's Tlake Nuake, uh, the Lord who is everywhere. And then Baldface, the, the parakeet, uh, he enters. And that's who, who is talking here in this play. Hello, me lord, I have come. I come laughing. I am bald-faced. My, ba my flower song weaves and spreads. Where is the head of the house? I come from yonder, where the white flowers grow. You will always find a trumpet to welcome you there. The water, moss, the water moss shines like the sun. Where is the head of the house? Later, another strange character enters who is really these two people. He is both rabbit and deer. And he represents the lord of the Magui cactus and the alcoholic drink made from it. Uh, so, secondly, he is the herald of the dawn. And so he says, I am he who comes, the deer, to rabbit. Rabbit maddened with drink, and deer with great antlers. My lord, old friends, open your folded flowers, your sheaves of festive songs. The flowering tree is girt about, is upright, stands erect, and scatters flowers. In the mists of the rains art thou heard. In its branches 
thou goes flying, precious, precious pheasant, and making song. Some strange business, you know, this pheasant symbol of the sun, and he says that he will dance. And so, bald faced parakeet returns and says, Here I come, singing again. I am the bald faced parakeet, the splendorous parakeet, and my song is loud. I shall include it in a painting in the flowery courtyard. My song is loud. The angry rabbit appeared in the rainy season, though it is now flowering time. He shivers. Look at him, my nephews. Now the gilded butterfly. The, the gilded butterfly is sucking my heart, which is like a flower in bloom. Oh, my friends, I'm shaking down the sweet scented flowers. I'm shaking the battle flower and I come from yonder by the battlefield. I am like a Quetzal bird in that I come flying from the place of anguish from yonder by the battlefield. The angry rabbit answers, I am the angry rabbit. Behold me, my wrath is terrible. Lock yourselves up. I make sparks fly from the eyes. I go about laughing. I come from the flowering patio. So the play ends with these following lines. Song thief, you are my heart. How shall I capture those songs? You suffer like a painting. Take the black ink and lay it in the red. Perhaps by the time you have done your task, you will no longer suffer pain. In other words, if knowledge is fixed indelibly, indelibly as in a painting in the heart, all pain will cease. Or maybe even that the occupation of the painter who exercises the painter's skills with his brush will banish, him, will banish suffering and help to answer those questions that trouble the heart. So, um, with that, I'm saying I have brought everything together here to uh, be this crossroads of, of the cross and to uh, show that the cross has other meanings and, and these meanings have uh, preceded, you know, the other more standard one of the crucifix and the crucifixion. And so, uh, you can feel a new relationship with the flowering tree, with the cross of, of uh, the quickening cross, I want to call it. So, like that. Uh, muchas gracias por siempre. Dios